climate change is the most important or most dangerous threat ever to face humanity. Not unlike the threat of nuclear holocaust, the current crisis threatens to render large parts of this world uninhabitable to humans and to tear down civilization as we know it. Unlike nuclear war, the solution to climate change requires fundamental and rapid changes of society like we have seldom seen. And these changes need to go against the capitalist structures of society. My name is Søren Eberhøj. I'm a LARPA, a LARP designer, and an engineer. And for me, this is a difficult talk. Um, I'm going to point out some uncomfortable truths, for me at least, and maybe also for some of you. But in order for change to happen, we need to face these truths together. In my everyday life, as uh, Johanna just said, I, um, I'm a senior advisor on, uh, on energy and uh, and climate-related policy in, at the, the Danish Energy Agency. And, um, and through my work, I have learned two important things about this, uh, this topic. We need to act fast, but we are not. And all sectors of society need to act for this transformation to reach its goal before it is too late. And we are not, because this also goes for the lapping sector. As we're part of society, we need to transform our practices um, to be greener, like the rest of society. And there is absolutely no reason for us to act last or even late. Also, actions inspire. And if we are latecomers, we will miss the opportunity to shape the world for the better. Because making the right choices is part of spreading the message and part of inspiring other people to take action. But this does not mean that it is our responsibility in this room or this community to solve the, cri the crisis. It's a common uh, corporate motto that uh, everyone uh, must make sustainable choices in order to solve the, the climate crisis. Be the change you want to see in the world. And the sum of all your actions will take us all the way. This, of course, is a capitalist and system-preserving lie that enables corporations and governments to carry on as usual, while the most hardened of us despair and burn out because we still haven't found a way of mobilizing the entire world population to make the right choices against the structures of society that they are part of. Climate change is a structural issue, and that requires structural change. But also, the international LARPing community is a structure. As organizers of LARPs and conventions, we decide on the actions of individuals. When we set out expectations, or we set out expectations for how our participants should act outside their everyday lives, and some of these expectations and trends leads to mass actions that are harmful to the environment. So we, the designers of those structures of our events, we have an obligation to design them in ways that minimize our climate impact. But in the undying words of Mary the Hobbit, we're all parts of society. And even though the community and uh, all of our events are structural in nature, they still exist within the rest of society. And this limits our possibilities, and it limits the level of sustainability that we can achieve. So no matter how hard we work, we won't reach a fully sustainable uh, event or a fully sustainable lab community before society gets there. Also, we might not have the economic or volunteer resources to make all the green choices all the time. Um, and our events might become less accessible as a result of these choices. And this is something we need to recognize and accept, but it is also... Oh, it is also not a reason not to do something. And there are a lot of things that we can do. Looking at an event like uh, the Knudpunkt conferences or international blockbuster labs, we get a spread of emissions looking something like this. This is rough estimates. 
the by far largest contributor to our carbon footprints is transportation. And by transportation, I mean air travel. And by air travel, I mean overseas air travel. Out of, and this is an estimate, out of the 430 participants of Knudepunkt uh, in uh, 22 in Sweden, around 50% of the carbon footprint from that conference um, comes from around 35 people traveling from the Americas and East Asia. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone here, but we need to realize and admit to each other that a hobby requiring one or several overseas air travels or just plane rides a year is not sustainable in the foreseeable future. If we filter out air travel, food and beverages and materials consumption become important factors here. And this means that looking at material consumption, looking at recycling options and going vegan or maybe even just vegetarian become important design choices. Of course, this varies immensely across events and geography. Um, and there are countless choices that we can make that will improve our carbon footprints. And we're pretty great at this, right? Sharing knowledge and sharing design ideas took lapping from beating each other with sticks in the woods to art to blockbusters in less than 30 years. But we're not great about, at talking about green design. And I would argue that the reason for this is green hushing. Green hushing is this weird market flaw that, that some organization or companies, even if they make the right green choices, might not want to tell their uh, customers about these choices out of fear of accusations of green washing, yeah. of sounding arrogant. Perfect becomes the enemy of better. But I think this comes from the myth that fully sustainable is actually possible within the limits of society that we have today. But green hushing prevents us from sharing ideas and sharing our green choices. And these sharings of ideas have been our most important tool for change in other arenas that we have tackled before as a community. So we need to stop hushing and start designing. We need to accept the limits of how far we can go inside society and do something. We need to stop pretending that anyone can solve everything at once. And we need to start developing this as a field of design. We can do this, but we need to talk about it. So in summary, climate change is the largest challenge ever to face mankind. We cannot afford to fail, but right now we are failing. We are the structures of our little community. And as such, we need to design our events and our practices in ways that are less harmful. If we don't do that, we remain part of the problem. But we need to ditch the idea of going green right away. We need to accept our failures and our shortcomings together. Because I firmly believe that if we can imagine a better and greener future, we can shape it. And if we can imagine a greener and better lab community, we can create it. So let's go and do that together. Thank you.